So a while ago, we talked about the lambda calculus, which is a simple but powerful mathematical theory of functions. But something we didn't talk about at the time was the idea of curried functions, which sound a bit spicy, but are actually very useful. So that's what we're going to talk about today, curried functions. As we often do, we're going to start off with a question. And the question is, what actually is a function? So for me, a function simply takes an input on one side, processes it inside, and then gives an output on the right hand side. So you can think of it as being a little box or a little machine, takes an input on one side, processes it inside the box, and then produces some output on the other side. So let's have a simple example of a function. And as usual, I'm going to be using Haskell, but you can basically do everything I'm going to show you today in any modern programming language that provides some support for the lambda calculus. So the example I'm going to start with is a simple increment function. And we define it like this, increment of x is x plus 1. So it just adds 1 to a number. So you can kind of have a look at the anatomy of this, so the structure of this. And we're doing three things. We're defining a name for the function. We're calling it inc for increment. We're defining a name for the input parameter x. And we're explaining how the output is calculated in terms of the input. So we can have a couple of examples of this. We could increment the number 1 and we get 2, or we could increment the number 2 and get 3. So it's all very simple and all very boring. So let's move on towards curried functions now. And the first step we want to take is the idea of applying a function to a function as an input. So let me give you a simple example of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map the increment function that we just defined over the list from 1 to 10. So what map is, is it's a function which takes two parameters. The first parameter is another function, in this case, the little increment function that we just defined. And the second parameter is a list of things, in this case, a list of numbers from 1 to 10. And what map does is it takes the function here and applies it all the way across the list. So we're just simply incrementing um, all the numbers from 1 to 10. And map is called a higher order function because it takes a function as one of its inputs. So let's have another example of something a bit more interesting. Let's think about the idea of a function which has more than one input or more than one parameter. So we could define a little function called add. And we're going to take two numbers, x and y, as inputs. And then we're going to simply add them together. And the important point here is that we take the two numbers, x and y, packaged up together as a pair at the same time. Okay, so what we're going to do then for an example is we could add 1 and 2 and give 3, or we could add 2 and 3 and give 5. So all very simple and again, all very boring as well. It's not really anything, uh, anything new at the moment. So what then is a curried function? So a curried function is a function like add, which takes more than one input but rather than taking them at the same time, packaged as a pair or a triple or something like that, it takes its inputs one at a time. So how could we redefine add as a curried function? Well, it's very simple. We just take the brackets out. So rather than saying add of x, y is x plus y in brackets, we just say add of x and then a space and then a y is x plus y. So it looks basically the same, except we're taking the two inputs, x and y, one at a time now, rather than at the same time in a pair. And then we can apply this function in exactly the same way as before. We just give it two inputs like 1 and 2 and we get 3. Or we could say what's 2 and 3 and we get 5. Okay, So it looks basically exactly the same as the regular addition function, except rather than taking a pair of inputs at the same time, it takes two inputs one at a time. So then you can say, well, what's the point of defining functions in this curried manner? Well, the point is that you don't need to give them all of their inputs. So for example, if we did add of 1 and we see what it says, oh, we actually get an error here. So why do we get an error? So we get an error because this is still expecting its second parameter. So if I apply add to a single number 1, it doesn't know how to do the addition yet because we haven't given it a second number. And that's what it's saying here. It's trying to print a function here. So it says, I don't know how to show a function from integers to integers. Or if you want a more slightly comprehensible message, it's saying maybe you haven't applied a function to enough arguments. Okay, so with a curried function, which takes its input one at a time, you can partially apply it to a subset of the inputs. So what could you actually do with a function like add one? Well, we could map it, for example. So here is a way of incrementing 
a list of numbers without defining a custom increment function. So previously we defined inc of x as x plus 1 and then we mapped it. Here we're using the add function which is curried because it takes its inputs one at a time and all we're doing is giving the add function one parameter here and then it's the function which expects its second parameter and then it will map that all the way across the list. So we get the same behavior using this general purpose addition function without having to define a custom uh, increment function. So you can ask yourself at this point what's actually going on with a curried function when I say it takes its inputs one at a time, what does that actually mean? So let's kind of look at this definition again. So here's the definition we had, add of xy is x plus y. What we can do is do a, a simple lambda calculus trick here. Rather than having the two inputs on the left hand side of the equals, let's move them across the equal sign to the right hand side of the definition. And we'll do this in two steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add of x is lambda y arrow x plus y. So what I've done here is the y is no longer on the left hand side of the definition here, now it's on the right hand side of the definition. So what this is saying is if you add a number x, then what you get is a function which is waiting for a second input y and then it's going to give you back x plus y. And this expression on the right hand side here is called a lambda expression, it's a nameless function. And it's got the same kind of anatomy as a normal function definition except for the fact that you don't give the function a name. So if you look at what's uh, going on here, we're taking an input parameter called y and we're giving back the result x plus y, but nowhere in the blue box here have we actually given the function a name. It's a nameless function. And then we can actually play the same game with the other input as well. So rather than having x on the left hand side, we can move it across to the right hand side. And here we have our definition of our add function in a more primitive way. And this really lets us understand in a, in a quite fundamental way what's going on with curried functions. What we're saying is that the addition function is defined to be the function which takes an input called x and what you get back is another function. And that function takes an input called y and then gives you back the result x plus y. You can ask yourself where does this idea of currying come from? Well it's named after Haskell Curry who was a mathematician and logician who studied these kind of things. But Haskell Curry himself, uh, he wasn't the person who actually invented this notation uh, or this idea, he attributes it to someone else called Moses Schoenfinkel who was also a logician and mathematician working around the same time. Schoenfinkling is quite a hard word to say, I've had to practice it quite a lot even to be able to say it today, it's not, it's not a word which is very easy to say, whereas currying kind of just trips off the tongue, it's a nice easy word to say. So curry got the credit for it but really probably Moses Schoenfinkel um, is the one who, who first studied this idea. So just to wrap things up I want to give you an example which shows that actually curried functions are quite natural in the real world as well, not just in computer science. So if you think about a cash machine, what does a cash machine do? Well it takes three inputs typically. You put your card in, you put your pin number in, and you put a request in, and then it's going to give you some response which usually is taking some money out. And let's make this a generous cash machine, let's decide that it's always just going to give you a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars out. But this is not actually how cash machines work. When you go up to a cash machine, you don't put all of the three inputs in at exactly the same time. Well, maybe on a Saturday night when you've been out, you try and put all the three inputs at the same time, but this is not what happens in practice. I mean, you put your card in, then you put your PIN number in, then you put your request in, and finally uh, the machine's going to give you some money out. And that's because it's really a curried function. So let me redefine it like that. So. Here we're defining it as a curried function, it takes its inputs one at a time, so we take a card, then a pin number, then a request. Actually we can use the lambda notation to make this even more clear what's going on. What we do is we take a card and we get back a function that takes a pin number and then we're going to take a request and then we're going to give back our hundred pounds. So for me, this definition down the bottom here really captures the essence of what a cash machine is as a curried function. So it's a function that takes your card as an input and what it gives you back is a function that expects your pin number. And that function takes your pin number as an input and then what you get back is a function that takes a request and finally when you get the request the machine will be very generous and just give us our hundred pounds or your hundred dollars. So that's really all I want to say today about curried functions. They're a very simple idea. It's functions with multiple inputs 
that you define in a way that the inputs come one at a time rather than all together. And as I said at the start, they sound a bit spicy, but they're actually very simple and very useful. Functional programming languages take care of uh, a lot of the implementation details that in older programming languages you have to do manually. For example, memory management. Um, but nowadays it's very popular to use languages like even Java, for example, which um, builds memory management into the programming language. Functional languages do that too.